Hello, everyone, and welcome. Please let me know in the chat box if you're currently seeing uh, my presentation while we wait for other people to join. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Leah. Hello, everyone. So we're waiting for a couple of people to join. I'm Rida Baidun. I'm uh, an education consultant at Education Basket. And what we do at Education Basket is we help students apply abroad. And we have a lot of partner universities. OK, perfect. So while we wait for people to join, let's kick start with a general info poll. It's a very just to get to know you more, to know uh, what's your academic background, how did you know about the webinar, uh, have you ever did um, a CV uh, before? And why do you want to use the CV? Please make sure to fill out the, the poll so we can get to know each other more. For everyone that's currently joining, please fill out the, the poll while we wait for other people to join. We're gonna wait for a couple of minutes, then we'll start. So this is a general info poll just to get to know you more and to know your background. Why did you join the webinar? And if you have uh, if you have any questions, please type them in the Q and A section. We're going to answer all the questions after this presentation ends. One more, one more minute and we close the poll and we start our workshop. Okay, so I'm gonna share the results now. So your, what is your academic background? We have a 40% are undergraduate students and really happy because this workshop is for university graduates and young professionals. And how did you know about this webinar? Most of you through social media, which 
is nice. Have you prepared a CV before? A lot of you are saying I have 35%, yes, but I'm not confident about it. Yes, but I need to update it, 30, other 35%. 29% that this would be my first CV, I'm glad. What did, why do you want to use the CV? To apply for a university, to apply for an internship, to apply for a job, I'm really glad. 35% are to apply for a university. Sharing the result with you all. Perfect. So let's move on. I'm going to start. Before starting, make sure to follow us on our social media. I'm going to drop now in the chat box all the links related to our social media. So we do workshops and webinars uh, regularly. We have another webinar on the 25th for cover letter and personal statement. So make sure to check that out. Make sure to check our website. Make sure to check our social media so you can keep updating around all of our partner universities. And if you're interested in applying to university, we can help you and assist you in applying. So what is a CV? A CV gives you an opportunity to provide the university with a summary of your education, experience, and achievement and helps you get accepted to the internship or bachelor degree or master's degree that you're looking for. So use this opportunity to make your CV as interesting and as appealing as possible. And I'm going to give you today um, uh, some resources and that you can utilize to better make your CV more polished. So why do you need a CV? Most of universities and all jobs require a CV. If you're applying for an internship, you'll need a CV. If you're applying for a master's degree, you'll need a CV. Uh, most of the university will ask for it. So you need to have a CV that you can use to apply. So let's start. So in this stage, I want you uh, to follow me and to uh, let me know when you're finished with each step in the chat box so I can move to the next one. So the first thing that you need is to open Word document. Or if you already have prepared your CV, uh, even if you have prepared your CV, open Word document again so I can uh, share with you a tip. Make sure to type in the chat box that you have done that so we can move on to the next step. Perfect, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs, I'm really happy. So the next step is really easy. Just press on more template. After pressing more template, you can check for, uh, click on resumes and cover letters. So now we're covering resumes, so click on the other one. After this step, choose the resume template of your choice. So any one of these resumes, choose one, and then type in the chat box that you have done all of these steps so we can move on. Done, perfect. I'm gonna wait one minute so everyone would be on the same step, then we'll move to the next step. Yes, definitely. So um, first you will open Word document. You're gonna find out that there is more templates. You can choose between templates. Another thing is that after that, after clicking on templates, you click on resumes and cover letters. After clicking on resumes on cover letter, you choose the resume template of your choice, any one that you like. There's no specific cover uh, resume or CV that you need to abide by. Okay, so a lot of other questions I got in other webinars that I did is that um, when you don't have Microsoft Word, sometimes it makes you pay for the template. So I got your back. 
And I have another free and accessible uh, resource, which is um, Google Docs templates. I'm gonna send now the link in the chat box also. If you cannot access for any reason the templates on, on Word document Microsoft, you can definitely access them on Google Docs. They have also a wide range of uh, CV and resume templates. So you can just Google and you can find a template. Let me know when all of you are done with this step so we can move to the next step. Perfect. Okay, so now you have your template ready. It has an education section, a work section, maybe a hobby section, achievement section, uh, instead of work experience, maybe skills, interest, contact, anything. So uh, maybe a lot of you will tell me I don't have any hobbies to add or achievements to add or experience to add or any skill to add. So now we're gonna brainstorm together so we can find out what you can write in your CV. So if you're an um, undergraduate student, how about sports team? Are you in a specific sport team? Maybe the rugby team, or maybe you were part of a specific club or you founded a club in your university. You were part of uh, a member or a part of the uh, committee of a club. This is something very important, maybe the cycling club, uh, maybe you founded a bioinformatics club, maybe even a lot of universities offer a semester abroad or an exchange semester abroad where you spend a semester in another university. Uh, this definitely you need to add it in your education section. Uh, maybe you have specific awards, maybe adding three languages. Uh, I think a lot of, uh, Lebanese and students from the MENA region don't understand the importance of, of knowing money languages and adding that in your CV is really essential. So maybe you're gonna tell me even after all of this, you don't have anything to add. And I would definitely agree with you. And I'll tell you, okay, you don't have anything to add. Let's add something to it. Let's make sure to get you the opportunity that you want in order for you to get accepted to the university that you want. So. The perks of COVID, everything is one click away. Courses, workshops, internship volunteering opportunities, all of them are online. Just like this workshop right now, we're doing this online. Usually these workshops are done in classrooms or maybe are done in universities. Now it's accessible to you because of COVID. It's made everything very accessible and it's made online internship very accessible. Uh, universities and uh, work are not just uh, on-site uh, internship or volunteering opportunities or work. So it's simply as just Googling, whatever you want to do. Everything is one click away. For example, I have a student that I'm currently consulting. She has a bachelor degree in biology and she was interested in applying for a master's degree in biotechnology. And one of the requirements of the university that she has specific experience in biotechnology. She didn't have the experience, but now she's currently, she found an online uh, biotechnology uh, internship and she's now doing that. The company is in the US and she's doing her internship online uh, remotely. And uh, she's applying next, post, um, next month for the master's degree that she wants and she's gonna become eligible for the master's degree. So that's very easy, very accessible to everyone. Another thing that's really helpful is workshops. Workshops are really accessible and I'm gonna even send you in the chat box right now a link for, uh, one second, for Eventbrite, yeah. So in this website, you're gonna find international workshops. The thing also about COVID is that all of the workshops uh, conducted by PhD professors, any topic that you can actually think about or you're interested about, it's one click away and you can register for the workshop that you want in order for you to enhance your skills. Maybe if 
you're not looking for enhancing school, but more like guidance, uh, it's just one click away because you can ask questions after each work workshop, just like now you can ask us questions uh, now in the Q&A section and we'll reply to you uh, after this presentation ends. So, okay, now that we got the info needed, we brainstormed, we found out that you got a lot, if you didn't have anything, uh, we actually found you an internship on abroad or maybe have an online volunteering opportunity that you can add. It's really imp important to actually verbalize your role inside of this internship, inside of this uh, work experience that you have. Um, uh, what was your role? What did you do in this job? What did you do in this volunteering opportunity? So I also got you back with these action verbs. So um, I'm gonna read a little bit about these action verbs. Uh, it's really important to try to verbalize your role. So for example, if you did an achievement, you can say that you accelerated, accomplished, achieved, carried out, completed, improved, enhanced. For example, if you communicate, uh, it was uh, part of your job was communication, you advised, you participated, you wrote, you demonstrated, you edited, you presented, you discussed, you promoted, you persuaded, you recommended. If you took initiative, something that a lot of employers look for and a lot of universities look for. They want people who are leading, who are uh, creating, founding new clubs, maybe in the university that they have, uh, being part of the, uh, the committee of the university school board, uh, or maybe the student board. Uh, they want people who are actively active, not just in, uh, in the academic field, but they also want them to be active in the uh, student life in the university itself, research, you classified, you investigated, you determined, you equated, you searched, you developed, you served, you compiled. These words are really important. These verbs are really important to use and utilize. Uh, organizing or plan, planning, it shows that your ability to be um, uh, to multitask, it also shows your ability to uh, to manage your time. Uh, leadership, directed, supervised, motivated, guided, managed, led, organized, undertook, ma uh, managing, organized, implemented, established, produced, attained, maintained, problem solving, analyzed, diagnosed, deduced, increased, simplified, evaluated, synthesized, tackled investigated, examined, reorganized, solved. These are really important action verbs that you can utilize to actually describe your role in your CV. Okay, and we're moving to the second. So I'm gonna give you more examples. So uh, I have one of my students, he asked me this question specifically. Should I, uh, if I have an online job, should I add it? So uh, the answer is definitely yes. Why? Because it shows a leadership and it shows uh, that he took initiative, specifically that he's applying for a businessman um, uh, master's. Uh, it's really important for him to show that he actually has experience in this. So for example, uh, you can say that he's the co-founder and the co-owner of the online shop and that uh, the part of his role uh, managing this uh, online shop is managing the shop online presence, regularly update, up, updating the shop's website and various social media accounts. So let's look at this CV together. So we have here the work experience. Uh, this person is a college graduate. Uh, we have the main objective, the achievement how you can reach this person. I think the only thing that I can add for, uh, for this specific person uh, is that they didn't specify their gender, they didn't specify their age, which are something important specifically. Um, for example, uh, if they're applying abroad, the other person might not know, know if the person is uh, the gender of the person, so yeah. Uh, work experience, human resources intern, univer which university and the date of the internship. Uh, we have assisted the school, HR in organizing and filling administrative papers, weekly, 
coordinated uh, the student actually mentioned all the action verbs so i'm gonna move on to more specific things so uh, maybe you're gonna ask me should i add the work experience first or the academic background uh, first so if you have more than three years of professional experience then you should start your cv with your experience your current position if uh, if it's a current position you use the present tense that you're managing now you manage uh, your own online shop, for example. If you uh, did something in the past, then you use the past tense. So if, for example, uh, it was in 2018, uh, you say you managed the online presence of the online shop. If you graduated recently, then you start with your education section first. Why? Because it's the most relevant and more specifically if you're applying for university, it's the most uh, uh, thing that the universities are looking for and because you don't have enough professional experience to add another important thing that you need to add is that consistency is key so if you start with the verbs then all the points should start with verbs if you use uh, managing you have to also like in this cv example assisted plotted coordinated assisted organized or arranged kept took all of them are uh, start with a verb so it's very consistent if you start with a sentence then you should do that in the same way you should continue in the same way so i have some final uh, graduate cv proofreadings and notes you have to ask yourself, has it conveyed all of your accomplishments as well as an idea of you as a person? So this TV is the mirror of you for the outside world, so it needs to represent you. You have to ask yourself when you finish the CV, if this represents you or not. Have you missed anything glaring obvious? Something, sometimes we get a CV example that emits a degree grade degree subject. Make sure also to specify if you're doing a bachelor degree maybe in biology, uh, to specify uh, that you're doing it in biology. Uh, don't get uh, complicated when, when you send your CV to, to numerous companies. Give yourself a break between each CV and ensure that you have co covered all aspects when writing and or tailoring it. And I highlight the tailoring because uh, if you have a lot of experience, sometimes tailoring only the information that you will need for the job that you're applying to is, yeah, uh, is what's needed. You only need to include stuff that are relevant to the job that you're applying to, specifically if you have a lot of experience and a lot of achievement. Focusing, focusing on the things that the actual uh, job recruiter will look into is what's important. <laughs> Try out some of the following proofreading methods. Leave it overnight. You will find that fresh eyes uh, spot new mistakes. Don't forget the obvious. Use the spell check tool. Read it out loud. These are really important things. You need to, uh, to make sure that it's proofread before submitting or sending your CV to an employer uh, or an internship opportunity. So this summarizes the end of our workshop. So uh, I'm gonna leave the rest for the questions. And if you are looking to apply, apply abroad, send us your CV to review them. We'll be happily wanting to review your CV. And we are partnering with universities around the globe so we can assist you in applying to universities. I'm gonna also send uh, all our uh, info if you want to contact us through the chat box right now. And let me know. You can contact, you can send us your drafts through info at educationbasket.com or you can call us on this number or WhatsApp us on this number. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, I'm going to start answering some questions. Okay. If you don't have any experience set, I finished my master, what should I write in my CV? Thank you in advance. I think I covered the specific questions and uh, if you don't have anything to write and you're sure you don't have anything to write and you checked uh, everything, 
just get an online internship or an online volunteering opportunity. It's one click away, do that in one month, and then apply to the master's degree that you want, or apply for the PhD that you want, or apply for the uh, for the job opportunity that you're looking for, specifically in the field that you want. Uh, so make it as tailored as possible. Will the material be communicated to us via email? Uh, you mean this presentation? This presentation will be available on our website, the same website that you registered to get inside of this workshop. Uh, it will be uh, on our website, the whole presentation, so you can check it out. Uh, how long should a CV be? Preferably, I would say one page, but if it was two pages, it's okay. More than two pages, it's too long. Uh, but preferably you can fit it in, in one page, just like the example that I showed you uh, earlier. If we have a certificate of attendance from many webinars, should we add them to the CV? If the webinars are relevant to the job that you're applying to, or if the webinars that you're attended are relevant to the master's degree that you're applying to or the bachelor degree that you're applying to, definitely. And I have one extra trick for you, is that you can even uh, write the name of the, uh, the certificate of attendance and hyperlink it uh, to maybe the organization that you're doing. Should we add the massive open online course we attend? Definitely. Courses, Coursera, uh, any kind of certificate that you got from Coursera, or maybe you got it from a um, uh, massive open online course, definitely add that. If it's relevant to the, to, the, to the job that you're applying to or the master that you're applying to, definitely add it. And if it's not relevant, maybe look into other online courses that are relevant to the uh, to the masters that you're applying to and try to take these courses and show them that you're actually really interested in uh, and and this subject that's why you took these courses it shows them that you're uh, you're really fit to the job or maybe the uh, the master's degree does anyone have any other questions i think i answered all of them Did you think that these this uh, workshop was beneficial? Yes, definitely. I got another question in the chat box. How long should a CV be? Is it true? No more, uh, no more than two pages. Yeah, the optimal thing is one page. Uh, like the optimal presentation could be only one page, uh, but two pages okay also but no more than two pages. The, the recruiter or the person in the admission uh, will, will have a lot of files to deal with and the less papers they're seeing and the more focused and the points that you have in the CV are really tailored to the master's degree. They're gonna know that you're eligible for the uh, master's degree or you're eligible for the job that you're uh, applying to. Okay, everyone, if anyone has more questions, please let us know. If not, okay, that would end our workshop uh, for today. And I'm glad that you liked the workshop. If anyone has other questions to add before. Thank you everyone for joining. 
and have a lovely evening. Please let us know and thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Have a lovely evening. I'm glad that it helped you out. <laughs>